Welcome back to another episode of Chick to Chick. I'm Carrie Perry. And I'm Flora Pastorero. And today we're talking about something that is very near and dear to your heart. Yes. And very personal oh, for yes. you as well. Yes. So we're going to talk about Lyme disease. I have TikTok, which is a conversation about Lyme that I have had the past two years. We've got a third one coming up, which I'm really excited about. And someone who I have followed really closely in the Lyme world, someone who not only has a tremendous backstory himself, but he is a doctor. He's one of the top oncologists. He's really phenomenal. And he is basically creating this pathway between what he's already researching and how it can help those and, and, and get them well from Lyme. So we're gonna be talking with this man. I'm so excited about this doctor, but you know, Flora, you've been really good at bringing a lot to the forefront as I've discussed with you with Sam's plight in her chronic Lyme disease. Well, it's really startling to me um, just doing research on this. I cannot believe that Pennsylvania leads the nation with the highest number of Lyme disease cases, yeah. more than 12,000. And let's be clear about that. Those are the cases that we know about. Yeah, Those are the cases that have been properly diagnosed because there are so many other cases that have not been diagnosed right. that they think it's other things that are causing problems. Um, and the other thing that I found uh, just doing news stories and researching this, you know, a lot of people will say, well, why are we putting so much emphasis on Lyme? Nobody dies from Lyme, yeah. when in fact people are dying from Lyme, Absolutely. which was really an eye opener and something that I was not yeah. aware of. Yeah. So um, yeah, and I just, I just don't understand we are, Pennsylvania leading the nation with the highest number of Lyme disease cases. Mm -hmm. Next in line is New York State and they have a fraction of the number right. of cases. We need to do more in this state yeah. to help people who are suffering I'm from this it, disease. Girl. I'm doing it, I know it. you are. I got roller skates on, I'm doing You're it. You're fighting harder than anybody I've I ever am. seen. I am, yeah, I know. So so like I said, we have TikTok, a conversation about well, Lyme. When is that coming that up? That is on the 30th of April. It's at Dickinson College. It's gonna be an amazing, robust, educational talk. We have a lot of wonderful panelists. But right now we have um, someone, like I just said, I teed him up a little bit. But this is Dr. Neil Spector. He's at a Duke University. Um, he actually is one of the nation's top oncologist. He wrote a book that's called Gone in a Heartbeat. So right now, I just want to welcome Dr. Neil Spector to the podcast. Thank you so much for being with us today. Well, well thank you for having me. It's great. It's great to be with you. So, Dr. Spector, could you just give a little bit of a background history as to what you had to deal with um, with Lyme disease and kind of where you are now, especially as it pertains to this book? Sure. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, I uh, probably, uh, let's see, 1994, um, went from being someone who ran marathons and used to run 10 miles a day, six days a week, uh, to suddenly having a complete change in my health um, to where I could barely walk 10 yards without just being completely fatigued. Um, and unexplained, I mean, I, I was, at, you know, Let's see, how old was I? I was probably uh, early uh, 30s yeah. and um, had uh, started having cardiac heart manifestations, primarily uh, arrhythmia, so rapid heartbeat. I mean, everyone gets a rapid heartbeat when they see a scary movie or, you know, go down a roller coaster, but you usually don't have, your heart rate generally doesn't increase to 200 beats or more a minute for no apparent reason. And so... I would have these episodes that might last a minute or 30 seconds or so. They would come and go. And um, so for four years, I was in and out of emergency rooms with these symptoms. So mind you, I was working full time. I had a laboratory doing cancer research. I was taking care of really sick uh, bone marrow transplant patients with leukemia, lymphoma. And all the while, I, I was just incredibly fatigued. I mean, to say fatigue. Uh, is an understatement. I'm, I mean, really just felt like I had zero energy um, and was in and out of emergency rooms for these uh, episodes of rapid heart rate. I mean, I knew that there was something something really wrong with me. I mean, I, as a resident, um, had worked 130, 140 hours a week, you know, completely sleep deprived in a very busy uh, urban medical center and had never experienced anything like what I was experiencing at, at the time that, um, you know, my symptoms started. 
and so you to make a long the, story short, this, this I'm sorry. I was just going to say, and you're in the medical profession. I mean, that's the I'm thing. In the medical profession. You are in the I medical profession. Much. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm like the ultimate insider. I mean, I right. did research. And you didn't have any clue. You didn't know what was going on with you. Well, I didn't really, I, I knew that something more than stress was wrong with me. Let's put it that way. Right. I mean, I, I felt, I knew that I was literally dying of something. I just didn't. But Lyme wasn't know, on your exactly radar. It, was. it wasn't really on your radar, was it? Um, it wasn't, you know, I had, I had lived in, in Boston for nine years. I, you know, run through the woods and, um, but I had never had any of the telltale signs. You know, they always teach you, look for that nice little target rash, uh, you know, flu-like symptoms at the, the wrong time of the year. I mean, at the time, I, I didn't really understand the controversies of, of Lyme disease um, because I was doing cancer research and seeing cancer patients, so it wasn't really on my radar screen. So, uh, and again, I didn't really have any, I, I never remember getting bitten by a tick. Mm -hmm. You don't um, even... So what happens? Can you explain to us what happens? The tick bites you. Yeah. And then what happens from that tick bite that invades your body? And there's no mm -hmm. other way I can think of to describe yeah. that. Yeah. There's some sort of Born an invasion mm -hmm. of your body that you can't get this, this substance out of your body that it becomes so debilitating. What's going on inside the body after the, the, the tick bites you? Yeah, well, when the you know the the bacteria which is in the tick, um, once it quickly, I mean, you know, there used to be this debate over how long it takes after you're bitten by a tick. I mean, for a period of time, people said, well, you know, if 72 hours, you're, it, you know, if you get treated, you're okay. Um, and now we know that within hours of a tick bite, the bacteria is already inside your body. It it actually initially looks like. It's like a little corkscrew, um, and it burrows its way into the bloodstream through the skin, uh, and then starts to disseminate throughout your body, and and then it gets into tissues like your joints, like your heart, into your brain um, that are, you know, what we call refuge. I mean, so they're difficult for antibiotics to reach. Some of them don't, the places where these bacteria get to um, don't have great blood supply, so they get into what we call collagen, which is some of the connective tissue, like, you know, if you wiggle your nose, most of that is really collagen and not necessarily bone, sort of at the end there. Um, and so th this, this bacteria is really smart. It figures out where to go in the body to protect itself. It disarms the immune system, so the body um, is really not able, so these are people, so let me just preface this by saying that there's some people who, um, you know, you could go to a mall in, let's say, Boston and take 100 people and test them, and maybe about 20, 25 percent of people will test positive for Lyme disease, even by the strictest testing criteria, and never have had any symptoms. Um, Perhaps those people had an immune system that was strong enough to eradicate and eliminate the infection. Um, so we don't we don't know like why some people have debilitating you know why some people may get the infection and never know it. Why some people see a rash and get treated with an antibiotic and have no problems for the rest of their life, and why probably you know by some measures forty percent of people uh, who notice a rash, get treated quickly, um, about 40% of those people will have chronic problems. That's too big now, of a percentage. This isn't even counting the people who have yeah. fallen through the cracks of the medical yeah. system like me, yeah. who was misdiagnosed for four years right. um, before they were finally diagnosed. And you know, in my case, by the time I was diagnosed, the damage to my heart was permanent, and mm. I ended up with a permanent heart uh, pacemaker defibrillator for the following 12 years, and eventually, um, had to have an immersion heart transplant in order to, uh, wow. to be to here today. That, wow. That, so, Which was that about yeah. nine and a half years ago now? That was about nine and a half years yeah. ago, yeah. Friday afternoon in July, I was told in the intensive care unit at one of the hospitals, uh, one of the large academic hospitals in this area, that I had 72 hours to live without a heart transplant. Oh my goodness. So, and, and uh, you know, that emphasizes in my mind that this is a serious problem. It is. And I do hear a lot of people saying, 
it's just a tick bite. It's just Lyme disease. But right. it's serious that you had to have a transplant, and, and yeah. I know other stories that people have died of it as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, one, oh, of the, yeah. one of the things that I think is really remarkable with what you're doing, Dr. Spector, is you are a top oncologist. So, you, you know, your basis is all in, in cancer research. And if I'm correct, is it a lot of breast cancer research you've done? Yes, yeah. Yeah, a lot of breast cancer. Yeah. So we were talking, you know, about this. And one of the things that I think people should understand is that you're able to look at maybe what the future holds of with Lyme disease or Borrelia, um, how it's tying into the current research that you're doing, because this is what I think is remarkable. You hear all this sad, crazy stuff, but there's hope. And there's people like Dr. Spector who are just doing an amazing job on that research. Um, and so could you explain a little bit about what you're doing? So number one, we say, well, you've got Lyme disease as if it's one disease. We know there's multiple types of Borrelia bacteria that can cause Lyme disease-like symptoms. We know that um, people get infected with multiple bacteria um, and viruses when they get bitten by a tick. So I, I sort of cringe when people say, well, I've got Lyme disease or I have chronic Lyme disease because it just seems that it's disingenuous and is is um, almost being a little too simplistic uh, and unfortunately probably not benefiting patients because you know in contrast to where we've gone in cancer which is a much more personalized approach to treatment based on an understanding of what's going on in that particular individual's tumor um, we treat Lyme disease you know with the same sort of one-size-fits-all antibiotics everyone gets this then everyone gets that um, and I, I just think that that's, that's a mistake, um, especially in the chronic state. So again, there are people who get their doxycycline and do great. I mean, mm -hmm. we never hear from those people again because, you know, they're, they're not on chat lines and on yeah. Facebook or not going to meetings talking about how debilitated they are. But there are, you know, probably millions of people around who are sick from um, having gotten bitten by a tick, you know. So... What do they have? I mean, I, you know, do they have persistent Borrelia, the bacteria that causes Lyme disease? Do they have Borrelia and Bartonella, another infection, which actually uh, may be much more problematic even than, um, than Lyme disease? Do they have Bicia, another infection? Do they have Ehrlichia? I mean, so we are currently lacking in good diagnostics. Let's develop smarter therapies to target the bacteria and let's target the Achilles heel of the bacteria to the exclusion of the rest of the body. Let's not take a hammer, um, you know, to every nail. Let's be very smart about what we see. We don't want to ruin a person's normal, you know, microbiome, right. uh, which is, you know, the, the big thing nowadays, the mm -hmm. microbiome. It used to be Jamie Lee Curtis talking about eating your activia <laughs> and, you know, preventing, you know, some, some bowel irritability oh, it's beyond you know that. now we know that the normal bacteria in your gut regulate everything from your immune system to your heart health to your brain health and when you take an antibiotic even for 10 days you're disrupting the normal gut microbiome so you're affecting all of those systemic processes in your body um, including your systemic immunity um, we don't want to do that so we want to develop smart therapies we want to use the um, molecular information that has been known for 20, 30 years on some of this bacteria. Um, the DNA footprints for these bacteria are all out there. So we've gathered that information. We've looked at what are the targets within these bacteria that are not common to, to human cells and are not common to the normal healthy bacteria in the gut that we don't want to destroy. Um, what are the ones in Borrelia? What are the ones in Bartonella that we can target? And we've spent the last uh, year and three months or so uh, developing and identifying new therapies that we're now testing uh, in the laboratory right now um, that we are very excited about uh, as far as being able to, um, you know, smartly target these bacteria and spare the rest of the body. So, um, Doc, Dr. Spector, um, I, I want to tell you this. This is fascinating information, and we could just 
listened and listened for it. But I think what you've done is you've teed up quite beautifully how amazing your talk is going to be when you come to TikTok on the 30th of April at Dickinson College. So the details for those who are listening and watching, uh, Dr. Spector will be with us. It is the April 30th. Okay. Six to eight is going to be the TikTok where we have the panelists and we have some other ones uh, with Dr. Spector and we'll have that flyer out. We'll have information out. We'll be able to put out there. Immediately following is going to be the documentary that's called Under Our Skin. It's phenomenal. It's really this in-depth uh, look at Lyme disease. So once again, you'll have Dr. Spector there. It's free admission for I was just going to say, what if people want to go? Do they just show up? Do they have to pre-register? How yeah. do they get to go? So we just want to capture how many people will be there. So if they go to samsspoons.org, samsspoons.org, they'll be able to get their free ticket. And Dickinson College is in Carlisle. It's in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Again, all that information is on our website, and I know we'll put that out there, too. Yeah. Great topic, yeah. interesting topic from an outside perspective. Mm -hmm. Perspective. I certainly don't have any personal um, connection to this. I really do think that... Uh, we need to do more to get Lyme out there, to put it on the forefront, and yeah. to make it something that doctors, that's the first thing they might be looking for, oh, because yes. there's so many more cases do and so many more people coming up with these symptoms. Yeah. Why aren't they saying, is this Lyme? Let's test for Lyme. Immediately. It seems like it's not on their radar, and I mm -hmm. think it really needs to get on their radar. Yeah, well. With that, we thank you so much for watching. Again, the website to be able to check us out is... Well, if you have any questions or comments or, or you want to have suggestions for future topics... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, our email is chick to chick So it's chick, the number two chick, mm -hmm. at penwatch.org. We certainly love hearing from all of you, so certainly absolutely. send us an email. All right, all right, thanks for listening, and we will be back next time to chirp about another topic. <laughs> That's right.